He has taught it and still her really ringing in her ears. Daddy, we will all miss you. Wherever you are, know that your children will never forget you. We will recount your life's journey to our children and their children's children for many years to come. We love you. Rest in peace, Daddy. Thank you. Next we have next we have a tribute by Jim Joseph. Jim Joseph is the phone. Good morning everyone. I know this may be a sad time, but this truly is a time for us to rejoice because the word says that you know, blessed in the sight of the Lord is the death of one of his own and truly today is a celebration. I know that we are um, observing social distancing protocols, but I think we are all joined together in heart as we come to celebrate the life of a father a neighbor, a friend, a police officer, an uncle, and the list goes on. Uh, today I stand here on behalf of the Boseju uh, community group and the residents of Boseju to acknowledge and to recognize the contributions that our friend, our neighbor has made not just to Boseju and Boseju community, but the country of St. Lucia. So on behalf of the community, I'd like to express our sincere condolences to his lovely wife and the children and the uh, relatives and friends of Mr. Jameson. Uh, what can we say to encourage his wife who is our dear friend, and as a community leader, I would say that the Jamesons are one that the community has looked to um, in terms of their dedication and love to one another as a shining and sterling example. Uh, can I just put this down? As a sterling example of what marriage should be. Um, I was with her day before yesterday and as we sat there just going through the experiences and going through some of the things that she and her husband shared, I couldn't help but be touched. And it helped me to think of the relationship that Christ has with the church. When he said that he looked at his church and his people as a bride and he sticks to us through everything. And truly, you have demonstrated that till death do us what kind of love. And it is something that is rare in this day and age where marriages are not looked at as something with high esteem. So I really want to give some words of consolation to you, Mrs. Jameson, now that you've begun a new chapter in your life. I know that some of your relevance prior to this was your identity as a wife with your husband and now it may be difficult for you to understand what your purpose is but I want to tell you that your purpose is not to just wait until you die and that's it but God created you for a purpose and there's purpose in your life now is the time for you to fulfill this purpose to find a new identity to call on the things that you learn, the things that you share, to inspire hope. Because we do need hope now at this time. As the world is looking for relevance, as people are looking to the things that once held them, that once gave them relevance, as these things crumble, those of us who have those experiences and purposes like you, who have a wealth of knowledge and experience, to show what it is to love, to be there through thick and thin, you won't know what it is like to care for someone even through their pain and suffering. That now you have a chance that even if you can't 
leave the house, but you have a voice. That God gives you the power of encouragement, that power of motivation to tell someone, yes, I have been through it, but I can encourage you to look to God, to look to the Creator, to fulfill your purpose. So I just want to encourage you today, and I just want to say that on behalf of the community, that we have been there for you all in the past, and we will continue to be there. You have some good friends, and kudos to Linda, who has been there for the family. But we are there with you to encourage you, to support you. And I know your family, your, your daughters, your son cannot be here, but we just want them to know that we are family. That as a community, we will rally together and so that no one is left behind. The word says in James chapter 1, I think in um, verse 24, I think it is, um, verse 27. It says, pure and undefined religion is this, that we look out for the fatherless and the widows amongst us and we keep ourselves unspotted from the world. And as a community, this is what we want to do. To look out for those who try to look out for themselves. That we become the brother, the mother, the father, the sister. Uh, for everyone who is in need of that kind of relationship. So may God give you strength. May God just bless you with long life and, and favor. And keep on smiling. Keep that joy that you have within you. That joy that like when I visited you yesterday and every time we visited you, that you know you just had us laughing from beginning to end. Just keep that joy, keep that fire burning because this is what he would want from you. So, you know, keep the fire burning and may God continue to shine in you and through you. Next we have a tribute. By ASP and his commerce. Thank you and good morning, everybody. Let me first of all welcome you to Brazile, although I'm not from Brazile, but I am the officer in charge of Brazile, Rodney and Babylon Police Stations. And so I want to welcome you to Brazil. Let me first of all express sincere condolences to the family of the deceased on behalf of the Commission of Police and other ranks of the Royal Social Police Force on the passing of a beloved individual. Let me also express our apologies to the family for not being able to grant the deceased a recognition funeral, particularly due to the COVID-19 pandemic. I am certainly sure that under normal circumstances, the deceased would have received a proper sender. On Wednesday, May 20th, 2020, I received a telephone call on my office line, and I just happened to walk into the office at that time, inquiring about funeral arrangements for the deceased Joseph D. Johnson and Jameson. I said so because I am normally at the quarantine sites managing, and I just happened to walk in at the time. I'm not sure if the person was watching me, but the call came in time. I was a bit lost as I had never come across his name, but was informed by the caller that he had sold somewhere around 1950. I said to myself, there was no way I would have known him as I was only born in 1982. As I pondered as to what the contribution of the Royal Social Police Force would be at this ceremony, I figured that a tribute on behalf of the organization would be appropriate considering the circumstances being faced by the country. Um, Commissioner would have loved to be here, but on, normally on Friday mornings they attend um, meetings with the Prime Minister and the other um, cabinet members, so they are unable to be here with you this morning. So I am standing in King for him. I asked many senior officers if they knew him. And I could not find one, not even Mr. Francois, who is a former commissioner, or Mr. Myers, who is a former superintendent in the band. I figured that this would take me a long time. But then Mr. Francois directed me to Mr. Rock, a retired deputy commissioner of police. And Mr. Rock directed me to Mr. 
Mr. Black. And Mr. Black is also a former senior um, police officer. I think he's sitting in the back there. Mr. Rock, Mr. Black, can you give us a wheel? Okay. So yesterday I was able to interview both gentlemen and now I have something to say about it. Mr. Rock remembered the deceased as a very conscientious police officer who was always punctual. He never missed duty. He was well turned out. And when he said turned out, that means he's sharper than a blade when he's dressed in his uniform. They say normally when you sharp, you cut on both sides. But they said he was very, very, very sharp and neat when he was dressed in his uniform. And they said that he was very quiet. He was a very quiet individual. He spent the majority of his time at the criminal records office, we call CRO, where he was considered one of the best searchers and recorders. Back then, he did not have a separate crime scenes office, but everything, everything CSI like happened in that office, and he was part of that department. For example, things like attending to crime scenes, the photography, taking fingerprints, evidence collection, everything was done in that department. And he did most of his time there, and he was said to be one of the best. He spent some time in the courts as a recorder, and did that with distinction from all the accounts given of him. Mr. Rock remembered a very special time when during his wedding ceremony, he noticed the deceased in attendance. Mr. Rock really appreciated his presence. Mr. Rock indicated that the deceased may have spent about eight years in the Royal Service of Police Force before pursuing other career interests. As I indicated, a second senior police officer in the, police of, in the person of Mr. Ellis Black also recalls the deceased as being a very good CRO officer and this was because one, he was instrumental in the publication of the weekly police gazette. He developed a chat which would look at the modus operandi of criminals, that's the way the criminals operate, and would be able to quickly form linkages leading to the positive identification of offenders. And Mr. Um, Black even said that the deceased could even give you a seven-year comparison of cases that were recorded because he was so good. He would just look at certain things and tell you that this is the person who committed the offense. And in fact, it was that individual. So he was very good at what he did. He also played a critical role in the morning reports. And he developed a compilation of missing and wanted persons which was very effective during that time. And Mr. Rock slipped me a piece of paper here, this is Mr. Black, sorry, saying that he was also a lecturer in personal description, in modus operandi, and on crime reports. He also collated a system used for catching criminals on paper. So we do not have this fingerprinting thing where you check their fingerprints and you match it. But he was good at matching criminals once you see them on paper and he knew what their mode of operating was. So he was very good. He was also said to be a photographer and he issued the certificates of character. That's our police records. And he was also a crime statistician. From what had been gathered, the deceased enlisted in the organization around 1950 and was issued force number 167. He is said to have worked at the Grosley Police Station and some other units. As one who recently came through the doors of the Police Force Academy, there is in one of the classrooms a quote which many of the younger officers still remember, people like Mr. Kade and Ms. Samir and even Harrison who is here with me. And it reads, Am I a credit to the Royal St. Lucia Police Force? I am certain that Mr. Jameson was a credit to the force and exercised his duties with dignity and pride based on the accounts given of him earlier. 
the life of a police officer is not an easy one, and it has been proven, especially during this pandemic. I came across this quote, anybody can love a man that comes home every night and cuddles you and cuddles with you in bed. It takes a stronger woman like you to love a man that you watch live at night knowing he might not return and fall asleep alone. I am certainly sure that the family of the deceased experienced nights like this and they were happy to know that he indeed returned home. But sadly, on this occasion, he left home and did not return, now resulting in some lonely nights. The Royal Service of Police Force is indeed thankful for the years of service given by the deceased to the government and people of St. Lucia. His dedication and contributions have assisted the organization in being where it is today, and we are truly honored and grateful. Though he is no longer with us, let us not forget him in our hearts and cherish those beautiful moments which we we'll share together. In closing, let me quote Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7, which reads, For we walk by faith and not by sight. Let us all who are here today go with the faith and hope that we shall meet our departed friend again. And as individuals who still have some time to keep trusting in the Lord and believing that He is willing and able to do anything for us, I thank you. May he rest in peace. Amen. The pole bearers, please wheel the body to the front. Let's all stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Praise be God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of the saints, and the Lord of all consolation. He comforts us in all our afflictions and thus enables us to comfort those who are in trouble with the same consolation we have received from him. Blessed be God the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be God the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. I bless the body of Joseph with the holy water that recalls his baptism, of which St. Paul writes, All of us who were baptized into Christ were baptized into his death. By baptism into his death, 
we would bury it together with him. So that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might live a new life. For if we have been united with him by likeness to his death, so shall we be united to him by likeness to his resurrection. We shall now place the fall of the white garment on the coffin as a sign or rather as a remembrance of Joseph's baptism on the day of the baptism he wore white, the white garment. And also reminds us of his Christian dignity and the fact that we are all equal in the sight of God. On the day of his baptism, Joseph put on Christ. In the day of Christ's coming, may he be clothed with God. Let us all join in singing here, trans him, what a friend we have in Jesus.
Let us pray. God of love and kindness, listen favorably to our prayers. Strengthen our belief that your Son has risen from the dead, and our hope that your servant Joseph will also rise again. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated and let your readers stop forward.
The second reading is from the letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians, chapter 15, verses 51 to 57. Death is swallowed up in victory. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. It's taken from its chapter 15, verses 51 to 57. I will tell you something that has been secret, that we are not all going to die, <coughs> but we shall all be changed. This will be instantaneous. In the twinkling of an eye, when the last trumpet sounds, it, it will sound and the dead will be raised, imperishable, and we shall be changed as well, because our present perishable nature must put on imperishability, and this mortal nature must put on immortality. When this perishable nature has put on imperishability, and when this mortal nature has put on immortality, then the words of Scripture will come true. Death is swallowed up in victory. Death, where is your victory? Death, where is your sting? Now the sting of death is sin, and sin gets its power from the Lord. So let us thank God for giving us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ, the Word of the Lord. Let's all stand for the words of acclamation. Unfortunately, cannot be there. 
It is difficult when we cannot comfort one another with hugs and kisses and handshakes. We are social beings and generally the more physical closeness we receive, the more comforted we feel. So we are all physical and emotional beings and as a result we shall experience pain, sadness and sometimes emptiness when we lose a loved one whom we live with, we talk to, we laugh with and we enjoy life with. And I heard some beautiful things about um, Joseph when he was alive, how he was a disciplined person and someone with a good, great sense of humor, you know, and these things you will always remember about him. So all the feelings and the thoughts which accompany them are normal and expected. Thoughts such as, why is this happening? Some people may feel that way. Why did God allow this to happen? Will I ever stop feeling the sadness which I now feel? At this time, you may experience a range of feelings, especially those who are very close to Joseph. You may experience, you know, denial, wondering if Joseph is really gone. You may even feel to some extent anger, maybe anger at yourselves for things you may have wanted to do for Joseph or with Joseph and you did not get the opportunity to do them. You may have wanted to say something to him but you delayed and now he's no longer with you. You may feel anger at, some people feel anger at, you know, the person who dies or having left them and that's quite normal. Or even the anger may be directed at the Supreme Being saying, why did he have to take him away from us? And all these are natural feelings and thoughts. And it is not uncommon to bargain with God and say, if only I had done this or I did not do that, the outcome would have been different. So grieving as a way of um, causing regrets to step in and, and the what ifs begin to play on our minds. And of course, you will feel sad. However, thankfully with time and family and friends support, you will be able to accept your present reality which you cannot change. So support one another, call one another often, and take time to listen to each other. Sh share stories of Joseph which you remember, and just be there for one another. You are grieving right now, and it is okay to grieve. It is important, in fact, to grieve, because it is our way as human beings of coping with emotional pain caused by loss. And a writer once said, which I like, he says, the only cure for grief is to grieve. Jesus understands your pain today. And the Bible tells us in John 11 that Jesus wept at the death of Lazarus. And in Matthew chapter 14 verse 13, we are told that when Jesus heard of John the Baptist's death, he set out by boat for a secluded place to be alone. So Jesus knows exactly how some of you are feeling today. In fact, everyone is feeling today. Grieving has a way of forcing us to reflect, it, it refreshes our perspective on life. It has a way of reminding us that we are not here to stay, no matter how rich, no matter how powerful, no matter how popular, no matter how talented, none of us is here to stay. 
and our stay here on this earth is a relatively short one. So the whole experience of this pandemic reminds us of the uncertainty of life and the fact that man is never in charge or in control, but God is. But God is. Amen? So we are forced to realize that we must not and we cannot depend on mere human beings, but our dependence, our trust, and our faith must always be in God Almighty. We do not have the answers, and even this virus proves that. Yes, doctors are trying, but they too are struggling with what this virus is all about. Yes, some of the scientists and researchers have some answers, but no one has all the answers about this virus. But God does. So for us Christians, a season of mourning is quite acceptable and expected. But our season of mourning must never extend to a lifetime of mourning. And Psalm 13, verse 5 says it beautifully when it says, Weeping may remain for a night, but rejoicing comes in the morning. We are spiritual beings made by Almighty God. And although our bodies will die one day, our spirits live on and are united to God, our Creator. And as Christians, we believe and we know that death never has the final say. God does. And in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 55 to 57, it says it clearly, it says, Death has been swallowed up by victory. Death, where is your victory? Death, where is your sting? Give thanks to God who gives us the victory through Christ Jesus our Lord. And we are still in the Easter season. And the Easter season ends on Pentecost Sunday. We are still in the Easter season. And the pastoral candle, which is this candle right there in front of the coffin, reminds us of the victory of which the Bible speaks. The fact that Jesus conquered death and rose from the dead. So that one day we too will be with him forever in heaven. For the Christian, victory has already been won. And the book of Romans chapter 6 verse 23 instructs us that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. You see, Jesus died and he resurrected. And the same will happen to us if we believe in him. For Almighty God so loved the world that He gave us His only Son, and whoever believes in Him may not perish but have everlasting life. So yes, as human beings we grieve and we feel the pain of losing people we love, but we grieve with a difference. We grieve with hope. Hope that we too, like Jesus, will resurrect and live happily with Him forever. And St. Paul in his first letter to the Thessalonians, chapter 4, he puts it well when he said, and I'm quoting from him, he said, Brothers and sisters, we want you not to be mistaken about those who are already asleep, lest you grieve as do those who are born. We believe that Jesus died and rose. It will be the same for those who have died in Jesus. God will bring them together with Jesus and for his sake. So my brothers and sisters, we have everything to gain if we believe in God. 
God the Father, Jesus our Savior, and the Holy Spirit our Sanctifier. Let us do everything in our power to know Him, to love Him, and to serve Him while we are here on this earth. And none of us knows the time or the hour. Look, George Ogis was found dead on Sunday. And many are, you know, have, been, have died, whether it be through murder, through sickness, the coronavirus, through, through different, in different ways. So we don't know. We don't know when our turn will come. So God, we know, loves us. And he also wants us to love one another, as he said in John 13, 34. A new commandment I give you, love one another as I have loved you. And that's really the essence of Christianity. The essence of being a true follower of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So in the gospel I read, Jesus told his disciples, do not let your hearts be troubled. Have faith in God and have faith in me. He went on to say that he is going to prepare a place for us. Jesus is saying the same to you. Do not be troubled. He has gone to prepare a place for Joseph. He will be taken, Joseph will be taken care of. Jesus wants to assure you that this is not the end of Joseph or any of the loved ones who have died. It is actually the beginning of a brand new life for him. Amen. Let us stand for the prayer. After each prayer, we say, Lord, hear our prayer. In baptism, Joseph received the light of Christ. Scatter the darkness now and lead him over the waters of death. Lord, in your mercy. Our brother Joseph was nourished at the table of the Savior. Welcome him to the halls of the heavenly banquet. Lord, in your mercy. Many friends and members of families have gone before us and await the kingdom. Grant them a new everlasting home with your son. Lord, in your mercy. Show your mercy to those who suffer from 
just the, the things, the games you have done, and gather them to it, the eternal kingdom of peace. Lord, in your mercy. Those who trusted in the Lord now sleep in the Lord. Give refreshment, rest, and peace to all whose faith is known to you alone. Lord, in your mercy. The family and friends of Joseph seek comfort and consolation. Heal the pain and dispel the darkness and doubt that come from grief. Lord, in your mercy. And we are assembled here in faith and confidence to pray for our brother Joseph. Strengthen our hope so that we may live in the expectation of your son's coming. Lord, in your mercy. Let us pray. Lord God, give us peace and heal our souls. Hear the prayers of the Redeemer, Jesus Christ, and the voices of your people, whose lives were purchased by the blood of the Lamb. Forgive the sins of all who sleep in Christ, and grant them a place in the kingdom. We ask this to Christ our Lord.
Let's all stand. Let us all pray together a beautiful prayer which the Lord Himself taught us. As we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to be tempted, but deliver us from evil. Before we go our separate ways, let us take leave of our brothers. May our prayer express our affection for him. May it ease our sadness and strengthen our hope. One day we shall joyfully greet him again when the love of Christ, which conquers all things, destroys even death itself. And I shall sprinkle the cotton once again. And the sprinkling may be a reminder of the saving grace of baptism, the saving water of baptism, as well as the reminder of Joseph's baptism. I shall also incense the cotton just to honor the body, so a symbol of honoring the body, and saying farewell. And the fact that all our prayers collectively, you know, will rise like incense. Let's go sing it again.
Bring children to the joys of heaven. We pray to the Lord. Our brother was washed in baptism and anointed with the Holy Spirit. Give him fellowship with all the saints. We pray to the Lord. He was nourished with your body and love, granting a place at the table in your heavenly kingdom. We pray to the Lord. And Lord, comfort us in our sorrow and the death of Jesus. Let our faith be our consolation and eternal life our hope. We pray to the Lord. Let us pray. God of holiness and power, accept our prayers on behalf of your servant Joseph. Do not count his deeds against him, for in his heart he desired to be away. As his faith united him to your people alone, so may your will still join him to the angels in heaven. We are blessed in Christ our Lord. Amen. Now we have to pray for God's blessing. Merciful Lord, you know the anguish of the sorrowful. You are attentive to the prayers of the humble. Hear your people who cry out to you in the need and strengthen their hope in your lasting goodness. We are blessed in Christ our Lord. Amen. Eternal rest grant unto you, O Lord, and let the perpetual life turn upon us. May you rest in peace. Amen. And may the soul and the souls of all the faithful people to the mercy of God rest in peace. Amen. And may the peace which is beyond all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of the Son and Lord of Jesus Christ. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. who in the peace of Christ.
It's better for her because she can see. Bring, bring the chair.
right free dress. Yeah, yeah. 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 Oh. 